We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news. The following is a Journey to Comics Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into Comics, the podcast about everything nerd, with your hosts, Nate Phillips and Brandon Stone. We've come a long way from the Prime Minister's exploding cake. Or have we? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Journey into Comics. It's episode 174. I am your host, Nate. As always, joining me is my podmaster friend himself, Brando. Welcome. What's going on, Nate? Not much, man. It's uh, crazy. Yesterday, if we're... Well, okay, this is past future tripping. So this is old news, I guess, but a couple days ago, it was really warm out, like almost 60 degrees outside, and now today it's like 15 to fucking degrees outside, and I'm not cool with it. It's cold. It was quite the wintry, slippery trek to work this morning. Um, uh, There was a point while trying to clear off the sheet of ice off my car that I almost, I I gave up. I kind of came inside and took a break and pondered. What it would be like to go back to bed. It's like, fuck it. I'm calling it a day right now. <laughs> We're hanging up my boots. I'm shutting the car off. I'm going to drink myself a nice cup of a sleepy time tea. and Call it a morning. Sleep in till 1045. You cannot do At- that with a toddler. <laughs> no chance in hell, buddy. 730 rolls around and your ass is awake if it wasn't already. <laughs> Um, he woke up yesterday or I guess, uh, yeah, like, or yeah, it's, it's still today. I guess this morning at three o'clock in the morning, crying for popcorn for popcorn. He was like, I, I vaguely woke up. My alarm goes off at four. And so like I woke up and she got up. So instantly I'm like, all right, she's got this. And I'm like out. That's like totally two years into parent life, not caring about this unless she comes back in and say, you know, saying that she needs help. So shit, look, honey, you need to get up, please. There's a popcorn crisis. Well, okay, so <laughs> I heard him like crying through the baby monitor, and heard him saying something, but I didn't know. I thought he was just like, yes, yeah, yelling for one of us or whatever. And then she, she, you know, she tells me that no, he was crying for popcorn. And then so I was, uh, I was joking around with a couple of our. Uh, of our esteemed network hosts, uh, you know, uh, Dick, Blaine, Dongo, T- you know, Tyner, and uh, and Tyler McLaughlin, of course, the illustrious now co-hosts of Podcastrophy. Congratulations. I love that. Tyler. That's awesome news. Welcome to the family. Anyway, we were joking around, and he's all like, you're, you're in the kitchen, 3 o'clock in the morning with a jiffy pop over the stove, just... <laughs> and that brought back memories of, uh, of, of Stu Pickles from Rugrats making... Pudding, chocolate pudding at like four o'clock in the morning, and there's this meme going around from from that where you know uh, I believe her name is Dee Dee. She goes, "Stu, what are you doing making pudding? It's four o'clock in the morning." And he says, "I've lost control of my life." <laughs> yes, he has. Uh, Brando, it's weird because you know the weather outside is cold, and cold, awful winter weather. Definitely kind of has warm, fuzzy feelings for me in regards to this podcast. Well, I do recall uh, there being a quite the long stint of nothingness from this podcast after the first episode due to a wintry, wintry hell. And then, of course, we got snowed in one year and uh, thankfully had the power on to podcast. That was pretty awesome. I'll never forget that. That was like uh, Captain Man in the Snowy Threesome episode. I do believe so, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Going way back. Uh, But uh, to go all the way back to the beginning, it's kind of awesome today, Brando, because as this episode is dropping, it is officially the four-year anniversary of Journey into Comics podcast. That is That is crazy. I do believe that, you know, as of June 
when I've come on board, it will have been four years. And I do believe that is the longest you and I have done any project consecutively co- t- together. Fuck yeah, we didn't fuck this one up. I didn't fuck this one up. I didn't fuck yes. this one up. <laughs> yes. I think we're really good at it, Brando. I think we have a lot of fun podcasting, and I've been really grateful that all the things that have kind of uh, transpired from the show starting in January of 2014 to you coming on later that year to, you know, eventually spawning off a couple shows to now the network to now we've got all these other crazy things in in the process and Road to Infinity War on Patreon and whatnot. Uh, it's just weird to kind of like briefly reflect because I feel like we've done a lot of reflecting. 150 just happened, uh, you know, not too many episodes ago here, uh, less than half a year ago as we look at it. But uh, it's just, it's really cool because I really love podcasting. Deep down in my heart, it's something that I enjoy doing and I've literally shaped my world around the fact that I love podcasting. This is my life. Uh, so hitting the four year mark here is a really cool thing to kind of look back on especially considering i think one or two of the years that i've podcasted after my first year i didn't even mention it was like the one year anniversary of the show or maybe i did i just don't recall you'd have to go back and listen folks but it doesn't matter anyways let's actually get into business today brando and i want to just say you know thank you so much for you know opening the doors and making this podcast thing even bigger than it was when I started it. Well, I want to thank you for inviting me into this crazy world of podcasting, a world that I always wanted to be involved with. I, I, I always wanted through the door. I just hadn't opened the door yet myself. And you, you said, hey, I've got the door open here, and uh, uh, let's try and figure this thing out together. And I think together we have. We've created something that is beyond us now and that is very something that is very you know fills me with a lot of pride just this past weekend i got to go and uh just for a brief period of time hang out with the dudes with brews and uh those of course guys uh are the brews with dudes and uh they were doing their little taste test thing and uh it was it was really cool because i got to be with the dudes that drink brews on brews with dudes and you were just hanging out as the pod master. I have been anointed that, uh, I guess. You know, the best uh, the best nicknames are are in fact anointed. They're they're not created by somebody; they are given to you. <laughs> and I wear that one like a badge. It was awesome, though. I mean, it was really cool to sit back and relax. And uh, you know, maybe one time you and I can sit down with a full episode of Bruise. But Nate, just you know, when he gave me this, like when Nick. Maxon, the host of Bruce, gave me the shout out there, and it was just like, it was it was a cause for reflect because it's like think about when I came on board, episode seven officially as co-host, but episode five was my first, and it was your and it was this show's first host, or guest host, guest whatever. Um, think about where it's come from then, because now think about all of these crazy, awesome cast of characters that now inhabit the journey into comics network. We've now created a small little network of shows from started from just with that one, you know, it started four years ago with you sitting down going, let me talk into this microphone and see what happens. And then you didn't do anything for a while. So, you know, it was like, Oh, uh, is Nate going to do anymore? And then you did a couple more. And then I came on board, you know, who knows how how many more you would have done if it was just by yourself. You know, maybe you wouldn't have felt inspired. It's a lot easier to do a, a show talking about stuff when you're not just talking to a microphone. And, you know, actually, I think beyond that, Brando, I want to reflect upon this a little bit, too, here. I think it's better to podcast because even now doing Voices of Survival and whatnot, where it's, again, kind of a solo show where I'm interviewing one person or whatever, um, it feels to me that within the network, it's awesome because we can all throw ideas out there at each other or, hey, can I get an opinion? What do you guys think about this? And it kind of overall, I think, makes it easier for everybody who's doing shows with us, if that makes any sense. Well, it's awesome because we also have like a bit of a support system. You know, we yeah, uh, absolutely this isn't just a network. It's a group of people. It's friends. It's family. And, you know, 
I remember you were on the podcasting smarter and you know, she was talking kind of more of a business sense and we really haven't established that yet. It, it's, it's not really there because we're all a part of the same team. We're all working towards this goal of making what we're doing bigger. And, uh, you know, big shout out to Podbean too, because, you know, through their feature week, we have grown in followers immensely. Welcome everybody. And of course that has also boosted our, our, our you know, our listens. They, with, we, we more than doubled, we tripled, quadrupled our follower base on just that platform. So it, it's awesome to see growth. You know, every single year this show has grown. It has grown from, you know, year one, just a few months. It was just you sitting there. And then here it comes in, Brando Skyping in over a PS3 headset. And then the next thing you know, me and you are hanging out together in the same room talking. Man, I loved that first podcast we did in the same place. I know. And then, you know, come back around. here. Then we're at episode 50, pulling a show out of our ass. That, it happened so fast. I think we put, we did that show, and let me tell you what. In refl- if we're going to reflect on 50 for just a hot second here real quick. That is a show that, to me, we had no business pulling off as smoothly as we did. <laughs> we did not have the time management or technical capabilities, or at least I don't think we thought we did, have the know-how to pull that off with with near flawless precision. I mean, it was maybe, what, we had like 10 minutes where we needed to move things along because we had another call waiting on us, but... And we had nine guests. Dude, That's ridiculous. We overshot that tremendously. Uh, we we really shot higher than what we probably should have with our level of management at the time. Because we thought, oh, it'll work out. But our stupid asses were like, let's do this podcast with all of these people on the same day as the baby shower. Which is, of course, a very a big deal, but it's also like very important to the mom, a.k.a. my wife, and... A.k.a. the person you do not want to piss off. Well, number one, you know, she is my wife. We live in the same house. We don't purposely try to piss each other off. Number two, she's pregnant. So she's her hormones are even crazier than normal. And so that was just like, I'm not about to say, yeah, we got to duck early so we can do this podcast. I couldn't do that. It was not going to happen. So for us to try and do that, it was awesome. I didn't really get a chance to enjoy it thoroughly while I, while we did it. I was so busy. I was still in the mode of not talking into the microphone because yeah. we'd only done a few uh, podcasts in person. The issue was it, it was my original USB condenser. I didn't I I would always lean way back and just relax and I would just talk and it would pick me up. Yeah, you know, in a great, you know, it would sound great on Skype. But, like, then I'm, like, laying here, and I'm just, like, way back here, you know, hanging. Hey, man, how's it going? It's a great show, man. And then and you, you, you like, pulled an Andrew Poor. Uh, I guess so. I, I haven't uh, – I've only ever done one show, really, with, you know, you know with Poor Boy. And that was uh, that was at the dinner table. So <laughs> that was another first that we have uh, I've ever tried. I was going to bring that up during Brews with Dudes, but they were just kind of – they were trying to move their show along. Uh, they, you know, they were, that was their first podcast in public, and you know, it, they, you know, they were like, "Hey, man, this is kind of cool, you know, calm little setting." And I said, "Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that we, you know, we did this at Christos at the dining room table, <laughs> with the, in the midst of people getting food and eating food, and somehow we pulled a weird, unique show out of that as well. That yeah, that was like maybe not everybody was super comfortable with, but." You know, I think that as it went on, it got better. Um, I, I honestly really like the show. Listen, Brando, one thing I can tell Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you liked that episode of Foodies. One thing I can tell you for sure without questions, because of you and, and how we've evolved and podcasted together, I feel it's always a necessity to look for the next evolutionary step. How do I up my game? What do we do that we've never done before? How do we strive for something bigger than what we've what we've ever achieved before or whatever, you know, setting goals because you have to. 
And, uh, you know, doing that foodies episode was like, we can get the whole network in one place. And, you know, it's not how I personally would do the episode. Cause if it was really up to me, we would have eaten a meal and then we would have went to a dinner table and sat down and everybody would have just been talking and that would have been the show. But with time constraints and stuff like that, we just made it work. And it's cool because now we can say, well, we've we've fucking done it at the dinner table. We've podcasted in almost any situation. Well, we podcasted in the fucking cold-ass car, Brandon, if you'll ruminate <laughs> on that one for a second. Well, you know, it's funny because that was the uh, – you uh, you guys were up. Walk Among Us was up to, to play a show, and we needed to get a journey into comics in. Man, we had to squeeze it in. Sometimes the show – has to work around our schedules, not our schedules work around the show. And uh, we were able to sneak into my car uh, and fog up the windows. And uh, I, I'm just saying that I was I was willing, but you weren't ready. <laughs> hey, you did not want to paint me like one of your little French girls, Brando. Well, I mean, I did take you for a grape snow cone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you got me on that one. Um, uh, like Blaine <laughs> Dick suddenly got into his head that he thought that we have done a traveling podcast before, and I told him we haven't done that yet. And I like said, "Potted on the move." Well, what I mean by that is, like in the car driving, we have like the Zoom with microphone set up uh, for us to pod. And uh, I'm like, we haven't done that yet. Actually, I'm down. Well. There might be a situation coming up on February the 22nd. Oh, that's great. Um, yes, you're going to be the greatest friend I've ever had and treat me to something that's really amazing. I cannot believe, Brando, it has been 10 years since we've seen Ice Earth together. I know, dude. Uh, that is what is... It's almost like every time I try to see this band, it's like some sort of fate. A trick of fate. There's always something. Um, and I don't know if it's coincidence or if it is, in fact, destiny. If the it, I've been thinking a lot about that lately. Is if, like, we are... How much, in our, how much of our destiny are, are we in control of? Do we have a set destiny and we're just trying to keep the wheels on the road? And we can kind of, like, adjust where the wheels go, you know? Because it, it, it really does seem like people can just strive... And do anything they want, but it also seems like people are, are just sometimes destined to be where they are. And so I've been thinking a lot about that, but um, so we went and saw the band 10 years ago in May. It was early May 20, uh, 20, I almost said 2008, <laughs> um, 2008, it and uh, it just so happened that you were not originally supposed to go. I originally invited Tony, our old band member from Draxus, because he originally got me into the band. And I said, "Hey, yeah. dude, it'll be cool, man. Um, you know, you and your girlfriend could come. And, you know, we'll you know we'll go." And he goes, "Yeah, that sounds cool." And then he kind of backs out uh, because he's like, "Yeah, it's gonna be her birthday that weekend, and we're just gonna hang out. I'll still pay you for the tickets, though. You know, the, I'm, I'm not gonna be like a like an asshole." So I'm like, "Oh, well, that's cool, man. Uh, sucks." So I'm like, "I gotta find someone else to go because." Uh, Rob is like, uh, yeah, I got to go to work. I, I'm not calling off for that. And I'm like, well, um, hey, Nate, what are you doing? <laughs> and you're like, nothing, man. And I'm like, well, uh, he's already paying for the tickets. Just fill my car up with gas, and we'll speed up there at 90 miles per hour. Man, and if you'll remember, we were on the phone together when the news broke that Barlow was back in the <clears throat> band, I do recall. Uh, I do believe that was uh, in, like, December of 07. Yeah, so that's... That's really cool, um, musically, that we're going to get to do this. See them in Indianapolis. Uh, very, very interesting turn of events. The possible with the meet and greet and things like that. Like it's, this could be a really. Uh, you've done that before, though. You've mm -hmm. you kind of uh, sort of know the band on some level. Well, I mean, I wouldn't as necessarily far as, say I know them, but I mean, I have met them twice before now. The whole trick of fate thing, really quick, I'll describe. The building that we were originally saw the band at was called the Pearl Room in Mokina, Illinois, and it's just a suburb of like Chicago. And the correct. Pearl Room is that, no longer there; uh, it's currently closed. It's down. gone, huh? It's gone, correct. And so, 
the about two weeks prior to that, I saw another one of my favorite bands, Symphony X. And the opening band, they, there was like two openers and then one local. Well, one of the opening bands with this band called Into Eternity, who I'd never heard of. And I was not really into that style of music at the time. But the vocalist blew me away, and it just he got my attention. And his name was Stu Block. And I found him on YouTube, like, the next day. And started. he had, like, vocal lesson stuff that he was posting up there. He's a completely self-taught vocalist. And I, I started listening to some of their music as far as, like, their album cuts, you know. And uh, I was like, man, it, I'm not really into this, usually into this music, but this dude can do anything and everything and does it all in the same song. Like, it's crazy. Well, uh, so there's that. Let's plant that seed. I saw Symphony X and Iced Earth in the same building two weeks apart. Um, so and the next time I saw them was in 2010. And they were going out for five dates, Nate. I do believe one of them was Washington, D.C. I think one of them was New York. I think one of them was Chicago, and that's the one I saw. And two of them were in L.A. They did two shots out there. But this was a small little short tour. Um, tickets went on sale in June. And it just so happened the Chicago date. Um, I want to say, if I'm going to go back in time here on the good old map, 2010. Let's go to September. I saw them on Tuesday, September 21st. Day before your birthday. Yeah. And uh, that was at the House of Blues. It was a really cool you know, shindig. I got to meet the band after the gig. So it was a really late night for me. But I was on night shift at the time. You know, I didn't care. And then the, the last time I saw the band, I did get VIP once again. And that was in Columbus, Ohio. And I actually had enough time in that I had vacation days now so I took like half the week off to do this and it was a co-headline tour with Symphony X awesome and I'm like wow no and um, I, I went to Columbus because in Chicago they were playing at some place in Chicago X was off the tour because they were going to start their South American run so, like, the last few dates of the co-headline tour, X was dropping off of it to go start the South American run. So, if I would go to Chicago, I would pay the same price to see just Iced Earth and Warbringer, which I would have done, but I'm going to see both of my favorite bands in the same place. And Obviously, that's the better choice. And it's a co-headline tour, so both bands get 90 minutes of a set. You know, you have the opening band who got a slightly smaller set, even for an opening band, to make room for these two big full sets. And then they would they would flip flop who closed the night, you know. And so and I got to meet the band again, but that was before the event the the event this time. And the venue either told us the wrong time or told the band the wrong time. So we sit outside for an hour and a half. And Shit. they finally let us in. And because they made us wait so long. They were going to, you know, take it. We, we, originally, we were going to have to go back outside. And we were going to get in first. But we had to go stand back outside while they did sound check. They actually let us stay in the building and listen to sound check and just kind of hang around. That's fucking cool. Um, but when I saw them the third time, the lead singer of the band of Iced Earth was now Stu Block. From Into Eternity. He was former Into Eternity. Now... New Iced Earth, both IE bands. And I saw... Oh, weird. I saw both... He played with an IE band before Symphony X in the same venue again. That's bizarre, my friend. It is weird. And then now... Now, let's go to this one. Okay, so I know this is a long tangent, guys. We're not talking about comics or nerd stuff. We're talking about our own shit. Uh, but... This is really cool to me because um, back in October, late October, we were scheduling our, our vacation days for work. And I had heard through an interview with you, uh, from, from Iced Earth that the tour was going to start at the, at the end of, of February and go through March and into early April for North America. And then they were going to 
take a break, and then they were probably going back over to Europe to do the festivals, do all that stuff. Well, I didn't know what t- what like what dates were. They didn't release the dates until like almost a full month later. So I'm looking at what's available on the calendar, and the vacation days are all done by seniority. I'm on day shift, so I'm kind of smack dab in the middle of seniority now. On nights, I was like top dog for like a little bit. Um, for a very short period, I I could get any anything I wanted. Now I can't, and I have like I'm looking at March and March, especially towards the end of it, completely packed, and I'm like, well. I'm just going to take a shot. I'm taking the last weekend of February off. And that just happens to be the 22nd and uh, 23rd. I'm taking a Thursday, Friday. I'm like, I'll take that off. I'll take two days. I'll I'll have a four-day weekend. It'll be cool. Even if it isn't uh, the show, I'll still have a four-day weekend, and it'll be really cool. Well, they announced the dates. And the first date, they're playing in Indianapolis, which they haven't done since since I've been listening to them. Um, which has been over about 15 years almost. So think about that, Nate. They they never play Indy. They usually always hit Chicago and they hit like Cincinnati. And they, they're opening their, their tour there. Yeah, they're opening the tour Shit. in Indy. And, well, I mean, think about it. John, you know, basically the guy that is the band. He's from Fort Wayne. No, he's from Columbus, which is just south. It's like right south of Indy. So the band is based out of there. So mm. when they're so when they hit the road, they're going to Indianapolis to get all the stuff together, and they're just go or you know, and they're just going right up the road to just do their first gig, and then they're going to go, uh, I, I think, east and work their way east, and then up through Canada, come back down through Canada, go back down the west coast, down south, and they'll la- like one of their, I think their last day is in Chicago. Mm-hmm. The 29th of March. Yes. And so I just so happened to get the day, the 22nd, off. On the nose. On Boom. the nose. And the second day after. That way I don't have to worry about getting up early and going into work. And I'm like, this was like fate. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. And then um, I, you know, you said that you would love to come down and go see them again with me. And I said, absolutely. Uh, my wife has gone with me uh, all the other times as well, but she doesn't really dig live music. She just like you know she doesn't like all the loudness and everything, and and also she doesn't like to be in the thick of things. She likes to be like kind of like way back, and I'm I'm varied. If I'm gonna be in the thick of things, I like to be up front. But you know, it is you know it, it's different for everybody. But I just thought it was kind of cool because now they uh, they haven't bought their tickets yet, but two of our friends are also thinking about going. Ooh, who are they? Which friends? Uh, well, one of them has a podcast here on the network. <laughs> uh, Dick is going. Uh, he, he, he has not bought a ticket yet. He's going to let that be his first Ice Earth experience, and he's a fucking genius because he's going to get hooked on that band so hard. Well, he already likes Maiden, so it's it's a no-brainer. I mean, Iced Earth is basically the bastard stepchild of Maiden, Priest, and Metallica with a little bit of Kiss thrown in. Like, it's... That, that's, the, that's well said. That's the easiest way for me to describe that band. It's just... It, it's the, They're the perfect amount of power metal, the perfect amount of thrash, perfect amount of... of power rock, you know? Some, some of their ballads kind of get... You know, almost power ballady and like very, very sing songily. You know, they're a good mix mash of all these different kind of genres that are all awesome in their own respect. But I just think it's kind of cool. You know, I was gonna buy our tickets, and Nate, we were we were recording Journey to Wrestling, and you were giving your review for Wrestle Kingdom. Yes, sir. And I was not listening to a word you were saying for like the first two minutes. Because you were buying tickets. No, because that's when I saw the update saying they they had given VIP upgrades. And I'm like, ah, ah. I got to make it happen. I'm like, I, I, huh? And then, uh, like, it's listing what you get for the VIP stuff. And I'm like, my brain won't work. What? Oh, man. What, what's a doubloon? <laughs> <laughs> 
So I Google searched a doubloon while you were talking about Crystal Kingdom. I'm like, it's a pirate coin. <laughs> it's cool. So I'm like, that's awesome. I'm like, a beer stein. What's that look like? Ah, that's cool. And so, like, I contain that excitement for that entire show because I'm like, I'm ordering this right when we get off of here. That's incredible. And Brando. I did. So both you and I get to do that. Um, Joe is also thinking about going. Of course, Joe was also on Journey to Wrestling last year. Oh, and, shout out uh, Joe. So we may all ride down together, but uh, at least that's what Blaine wants to do. Blaine definitely wants to do that, uh, and, and he wants to do one of those traveling pods. However, we, as in you and I, may need to leave earlier than what they may be capable of doing because our meet and greet is before the show. Yeah. So I would guess as much. We are going to find out what time we need to be there um, here as the weeks get closer too. We are only about a month away from that already. I am like, that's no, crazy. Fucking stoked! I also just today, Century Media was having a sale on their uh, vinyl, and I ordered five Iced Earth vinyl records for fifty percent off ridiculous steal of an idea oh my god i'm i i am um i am on uh on a page uh you can go like the page or i th- i in fact i think it's a group so you may have to actually join the group and it may be private i don't know i'm not looking it up but there is a show on youtube dedicated to this band from a couple of super fans called podcast and stone and i joined the group and the one of the guys he shared hey man these are on sale and I'm like, huh? What? It's hmm, hmm. And I and I, and at first I was just gonna get one or two, right? But I'm like, oh no, I'm getting them all because literally, Nate, for the price of like two of them, I got five. And you have almost the entire discog in vinyl form now, right? You're getting close. Well, I have plagues. I have the the record stay or record stay record store day. Um, variant like out of well, something out of five hundred version of plagues, which is still sealed. Um, that's awesome. I that's the the only vinyl I haven't opened. I I opened the other two that are probably worth more than that, <laughs> but I'm like, eh, this is numbered. But so I have plagues now. I have Night of the Storm Rider, Burnt Offerings, Dark Saga. And let's see, it was a nice storm reminder, burn offerings, dark saga, days of purgatory, and was that it? I sent you a picture. Let me see. I'm looking at it right now, Brando. Do, 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 do. That's it. Oh, you got sh- you got horror show. Oh, horror show. That's the other one. Um, because something wicked wasn't uh, something wicked. This way comes wasn't on the sale, even though it's on the website. And, oh, lame. Uh, that one is twenty five dollars, and then the the non the regular version of Plagues of Babylon is the same price. So w- I'm going to get those two probably at tax time just to round that out. But then I need to get Dystopia. I'll need to get Glorious Burden, which I'm gonna, never going to track that down. That one's hard to find. Uh, the two Something Wicked uh, Part One and Part Two Framing Armageddon and Crucible Man. Those are going to be hard to find. And then, of course, the original uh, release, uh, just Iced Earth, the self-titled. Yeah. Oh, and then at the show, I'm going to pick up. All right, Nate. So um, I think they, I, the band posted this, and they posted their like their new merch at their merch table. Uh huh. The, because they're the, they're currently on tour over in Europe right now. They're doing their Europe leg. So they have new shirts, and they have uh, stuff that's going to be available. So, they have new shirts. Train of our existence, if they can hear that. This is the second one, dude. I don't think I heard the first one. Uh, we were talking near the very beginning of the show. So, Nate, um, I, I'm going to send this to you, and you can look at it. Um, but th- we have shirts for some of the songs off the new record. Ooh, cool. So, we have a sh- we, 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 which has the artwork from it. We have Seven Headed of Horror. We have the the album cover. We have Three Decades Strong. We have Great Heathen Army. And then we have the Black Flag shirt. But what I'm looking at is down there below that is the incorruptible new record on transparent orange vinyl. 
Oh, shit. And on the right is the two uh, LP set, which is the collectible art book. Oh, fuck. In the, in the collectible. And those are two seven inches instead? Um, I think they're two tens. Or two tens instead? I want to say that. All right, so. Instead of one twelve, that's awesome. Because, yeah, the regular version is a 112. Okay, um, there's two by 12s. Um, now, the check out, now this is what they said. Uh, check out the ultra limited translucent orange vinyl that is exclusive to the iSurf merch table and limited to 200 worldwide. 100 of each version, the 2 by 12 vinyl and the, and the hand numbered art book are available on this tour. The remaining 100 version will be sold in North America, which we are at the first tour date, my friend. Fuck. I have to get money to get one, dude. So That is sick. So, oh, so, Brando. All right. So what I'm saying here is that we get we get a lanyard, which you see my lanyards in, in, in the game room. I've got the two from the ones I've been through, the Dystopia yeah. and the Escape, the Escape the Tour. So we get one of those. We get a poster, which is at the venue. They're going to keep them there, and they're hand-numbered. And they keep them there so that way we can get them signed. Sweet. Um, and then we are getting the the collectible uh, doubloon pirate coin, which black flag, you know. Awesome. You know, it's pirate themed. And then we get the beer stein, which is also pirate themed or possibly uh, even uh, Viking themed, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the laminate, the beer stein, and the... The balloon are being uh, delivered to my house. That's awesome. So, which is awesome because I mean, because uh, I'm pretty sure the beer stein could be used as, as like a weapon of some sort <laughs> if you were there. Yeah, uh, I don't Holy know why shit. you would do that. However, I mean, some crazy shit has happened at these shows that I've been to. Uh, uh, I mean, John Schaefer, the lead guy in the band, his sister got like shoved at the, one of the shows I went to. So, holy shit! I know, dude. It was crazy. He jumped off stage. <laughs> it was like I was like what the heck is going on man I happened to be on the balcony and had a cleared view of it it was crazy but uh, the, this whole thing about fate with this band and seeing them and having these things come together the fact that here we are 10 years later going to see this band again it's a different iteration of the band almost entirely uh, I think Brent Smedley was there when we saw them but he was he's a drummer and of course John he's always been there but everybody else is kind of like uh, shifted in, shifted out. Unfortunately, uh, Troy Seeley, who has lived, who lives around where I live, dude, and he's known in the area. Uh, Blaine's dad went to high school with him. Um, Kate went to school with her with, with his niece. Um, we got to meet him both times. The first time, I didn't really say much to him because I didn't. I, I'll be honest with you. I couldn't remember his name. I was so like, blah, blah, blah. I know these guys, but you're newer. I I, I can't remember right now, man. <laughs> uh, but then the second time uh, I remembered and he just asked where we, you know, where we're from. And we said, you know, from, you know, central Indiana, you know, he, and he's like, no shit. I'm from Delphi. And we're like, no shit. And then <laughs> you're like, it's, it's such a small world, you know, you know, Troy used to teach guitar lessons in Lafayette. That is totally crazy. And he has a newer band that's like, kind of like a jam band or a, maybe a country rock band or a classic rock band or something like that, you know? And they play around Lafayette and Delphi as well. And uh, I had a chance to go see them in December, but unfortunately, uh, the schedule didn't pan out for me to go. Damn. Brando, speaking about shows and local shows and bands and stuff... If we're reflecting and stuff, I think I should talk a little bit about the last couple shows Walk Among Us had. Uh, well, really, just mainly the last one we had. We just played Wednesday in Chicago at the Beat Kitchen. We uh, had a opening band, Living Dead Kennedys. They were awesome. They were literally all dressed up like um, zombified Kennedys, and mm. they were doing Dead Kennedy songs. It was great. It was totally off the wall and different. Anyways, we get on stage, and it was weird because, like, the first song, the energy was high, but, like, there was way too much bass, so I couldn't hear anything else, and I thought we were, like, kind of off and fucked the song up maybe, but then I'm like, no, we're still good. We've got it. 
But like when we started the song, I looked down and I was like in the song and then I looked up and like there were a fuck ton of people all of a sudden. There were just like all these people and it was crazy. We had a humongous turnout party type show that we really aspire to have. It was our best show in Chicago to date. It was a blast. But when you were talking about Ice Earth, and I, I, I quickly talk about Walk Among Us then to bring up an announcement we haven't yet made, but you talked about seeing Ice Earth in Columbus, Ohio. You guys are playing in Columbus? Yes, we are. We have our first date in Columbus, April 7th. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, we'll be playing with Mumula and the Jasons again. Oh, that's cool. Uh, do you know where you're playing? Uh, we don't know the venue yet, but the guy from Mumula said it's their favorite venue that they always play. So, uh, and those guys are all from that area. So it seems like this could be like a large turnout show party type thing yet again. And um, our sets have just been getting a lot more fun. We've been doing some of the more harder songs and whatnot so everything else is getting easier and it makes everything just like a blast that's awesome though because that that really branches out to a whole different um like like you will know nobody there other than the bands you've already played with Mm -hmm. so that's like something really foreign that's like going into just going into it blind you don't know exactly what to expect yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. We get these, uh, you know, these shows have kind of been coming to us one a month. These kind of like bigger, better opportunities. So we're gonna take them. Uh, but that's all I have on that front, Brando. Uh, I've got some other news, but I'm gonna sneeze first. <laughs> got some tight. <laughs> Once again. Sorry, folks. That's a podcast sneeze. You don't typically catch me doing that, so that's uh, keep that one for the record books or some shit on the four-year anniversary of Journey into <laughs> Comics. Actually, uh, what was it, uh, la- ladies and gentlemen, our twatchu? Yeah, that was episode twenty. Episode twenty. I'll be damned. My brain's pretty weird like that, Brando. Uh, speaking of things that are weird, Deadpool two is moving up in the timeline. What do you think about this? Um, it's going to be interesting because it's, they, they move it up a week before the solo movie, which we haven't seen anything about yet, but I got something to say about the solo movie, but I mean, it's going to be interesting because it's going to be able to like, you're putting Deadpool up, which Deadpool's going to be a big, awesome movie, but then you're going to be putting it up head to head against another, like it's a Star Wars property. No matter what preconception is, people are going to go see that movie. It's a busy, expensive month of May. It is, with Avengers, too, in there. Do you think that Deadpool will, um, in some form or fashion, find a way to tie itself into the MCU right here and then and there, and that was part of their decision to to move to accelerate things because Fox and Disney or Disney has already said, you know, Deadpool's not going anywhere. We're not worried about changing the rated R, you know, I'm sure Ryan Reynolds is going to be on, you know, there's no reason that shouldn't happen. So do you see any reason for them to like try to interconnect these now? It may be way too late as far as like making the movie and then ed- like they're doing final editing now. That's true. So, like, unless, like, as far as like major storyline plot to tie it in, it may be too late. You may be able to do a wink and a nod, do a uh, a, go- a good old classic Deadpool fourth wall break, but I don't know, like an after credit scene. At the end, that's possible. But then again, it's like, was there already an after credit scene planned? Do you do that one and then now do a mid credit? You know, it all depends. It really does. It's very. It's it's it seems like we're getting at least two really awesome movies in May now. Well, possibly three because check this out. All right, so let's talk about the solo movie just for a minute. All right, there are so many fears that this movie is going to freaking blow. All right, now we know that Lucasfilm parted ways with the other two directors because they wanted to do a more improv thing, and they wanted them to follow the script. Okay. Do you know who wrote the script? I don't. Lawrence Kasdan. 
Didn't he write uh, Empire Strikes Back? And Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Shit. And he, and he, he basically, he was at odds with the directors saying, I want you to f- more closely follow the script. And they're like, no, we want to do more improv. And that got Kathleen Kennedy involved. And then she goes, okay, think about it like this. If you're Kathleen Kennedy and you got these two guys, and you got Lawrence fucking Kazdan, he's the closest thing to fucking royalty that they have. Uh, I'm No offense to these two directors. I, I assume that they meant all the best in their vision. This guy has proved himself in the fact that he knows how to write a Star Wars movie. I'm just saying. If the moment I read wrong. the moment I read that, the moment I was like, you know, because we brought it up here on the show before, and, and and you've definitely let your feelings known on the matter that you're worried and that you wish they wouldn't have made the switch. But now it's like I cannot argue against this until obviously we see the movie, because not only now do we have like. Lawrence Kasdan's script, and I and I think he also wrote it with uh, another Kasdan. It may be his son. I don't know, son, brother, cousin, brother. I don't know. But then you bring in Ron Howard, very well accomplished director, to try and finish this thing. Now, it it the reports have been that they brought in an acting coach because the kid playing Han can't act. So, is it because he couldn't act? Is it because he can't act like Harrison Ford? Is it because he couldn't improv? What is it with this that made that? Was it to to flesh out this character more that he's having trouble emoting? Because with the cast that was on board with the whole improving thing, you I mean you got like Woody Harrelson. Yeah, he he, he can improv. Oh, yeah. You know, you got Donald Glover. He can improv, I bet. I guarantee you he can. Well, and Donald Glover just came out recently, Brando. I don't know if you know this. He said, he's like, don't worry. This movie's going to be awesome. It's going to do things that haven't been done before in Star Wars. It's going to be good. I think, and and I may be making a bold prediction here all the way in January, but I think this movie is going to surprise the doubters. It's, it, it's a Kazdan script, so instantly it got credibility with me. He hasn't, he hasn't hit a foul ball yet. He hasn't uh he wrote the best star wars movie of all time followed up by two of the other better star wars movies of all time so i i if i were kathleen kennedy it's like, kennedy it's like what do i do do i choose between the two new guys or lawrence kasdan lawrence kasdan wins in my book uh, I, yeah if anybody would know how to write a Han Solo movie, it's going to be this dude. Absolutely. He so, was in the thick of the best of Han Solo. Exactly. And then he got to kill Han Solo. Oh, also true. So, Brando, Jesus. You know, and this is his last script, too. This is his last one that he's doing. So, Oh, wow. You know, uh, it, you know what's weird, though, Brando? I think that this, this is going to have the same kind of Rogue One effect. If you'll remember, man, people were nervous about Rogue One. This movie's mm-hmm. going to suck. I don't know. It's not going to be that good. How do we? How can we get into a Star Wars movie where we know how it ends? Holy shit, were we wrong. <laughs> like They made us believers. So, you know, while I'm nervous about the future and what everything holds, I am, I would say, more cautiously optimistic that they can pull out something fantastic. Um, I just really hope they do and it's not you know a terrible fumble in the star wars universe that sets some shit back i am pretty excited for it you know uh when we said that the dude playing hans and nobody caitlin knows who he is really yeah he was in something that she's seen well i have not her first reaction was oh he's a good actor which Cracked me up because of what we've said about him here on the show. <laughs> Need, needed an acting coach, not a good actor. Oh, he's just a good makes, actor. Well, it makes you Wait, wonder. What? It's like, what is the, what is the whole purpose of that coach? And well, it's like, was he a bad actor? Not bad per se, 
or was he just not being directed the way they needed to direct him? Was it not being directed? Was it not finding the character? Was it not... Because when you're playing a young Han Solo, so much of Han Solo is Harrison Ford. So it you're you're mimicking Harrison Ford. You know, not a lot of people can pull that off. I think it. I think Donald Glover could pull off Billy D. Williams, no doubt. Oh yeah, no doubt. So it's like, I I want to say that maybe she had seen him in a movie called Beautiful Creatures. Okay. Um, I had, I have no idea what the movie is. I never saw it. It came out in 2013. Um, but I mean, he, he's been in, he's been in some like smaller stuff. Of course he was, he did one episode of Supernatural in 2005, way younger. He was in CSI and then from there you go into some smaller films and I think that might be the biggest thing that he's done. I mean, granted, I, I'm, I'm not at one to say because, uh, I'm not the biggest film buff. I guarantee you, if you guys say here on Foodies, you're like, well, I've heard of that. Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, mm hmm Because Hail <laughs> Caesar. He was in Hail Caesar. Oh, you know, actually, I have heard of Hail Caesar. Uh, I believe George Clooney was in it. Josh or Brolin, some... George Clooney. Josh... Yep. And then Alden uh, Ehrenreich. Is, is that how you say his name? Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he is third build. And he's billed before Ralph Fiennes. Oh, Wow. And and Scarlett Johansson, like when you look at top build cast, so this so kid he was one of the main characters. This kid is he's coming up, basically. You know, it, it, it's what's going on. He's this he's this young up and coming actor, and this is this is his biggest role yet, and this is this has the potential to be his breakout. You know. Well, and Felicity. Oh God, I'm gonna fuck her. What's her name? Felicity Jones. From Rogue One, mm -hmm. that was her breakout, right? You know, and not to keep drawing comparisons to Rogue One, but I feel like, you know, Rogue One was the first not episodic Star Wars story officially told on the big screen. So this is the second attempt at that, and I, you know, there's a lot of ways that it could shake out. Um, we're just going to have to wait till the end of May here, which we're not too far away from. I'm hoping we get a trailer for this shit soon, Brando. You know, me too. And, um, Super Bowl. I, yeah, I'm thinking, okay, so Woody Harrelson was picked over Christian Bale as Solo's mentor, uh, in, in the movie. Uh, Christian Bale has said that he would love to do a Star Wars movie. He's a big Star Wars fan for ever since he was a kid. Um... I'm 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 looking at trivia from IMDb. Oh, interesting. Han Solo was originally going to appear in the Battle of Kashyyyk in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, which an orphan ten-year-old Han Solo, who is being raised by Chewbacca, helps Obi Wan Kenobi to locate and find General Grievous by finding part of a transmitter droid that was sending signals from uh, Utapau. Of course, that did not happen. Huh. Um, let's see. I'm I'm trying to find something that re that we really don't um know and haven't talked about already. Hmm. Oh yeah, Am Amelia Clark is in this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Uh, the cast is, for the most part, stellar. Like, I'm really hopeful. I don't think... Uh, also, uh, did I hear this correctly, that Ron Howard didn't reshoot anything? Um, that, th that contradicts what I have heard. Okay, well, because I don't know. I, I don't... I don't... I didn't actually read the report. I just saw a headline, because sometimes you... Brandon is fucking 2018 sometimes you be scrolling and you just see some shit and you're like I'll get back to that and then you don't and then just you don't yeah the end I'm trying to find I'm 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 gonna go ahead and look that up real quick about you see let's do the old Google search how 
much did Ron? I like how much. Did, how much did Rin Tin Tin weigh? <laughs> seven. The answer Our is seven. Re. Shoot. Solo. <laughs> There's a lot of other crazy news I realize we have to talk about today, Brando. It um, says on December 22nd. I'm sorry, Nate. I just no, you're it. fine. Please. Um, Ron Howard Solo uh, reshot a lot more than expected. The film w world was caught off guard earlier this year when it was announced that directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller will be leaving the Han Solo spinoff film and that Ron Howard will be taking their place. Howard did a, did extensive reshoots on the film, and now Solo, a Star Wars story co-star, Paul Bettany, ha has revealed that Howard did possibly even more reshoots than originally intended. Wow. Um, in, in, in an interview... Uh, Bettany, who was cast to replace Michael K. Williams as part of the reshoot process, said that Howard's work was so impressive that Disney and Lucasfilm gave him even more work to do. His staging ability is so fucking brilliant. I think he went uh, went in and he was like a laser, working out what, what needed to be done, and then he looked at the footage, and uh, and then as things moved on, everybody felt so secure with him, and they gave him even more. He was shot a lot more than was originally intended. Wow, so he's uh, reshot a lot of the movie. Yes. Um, what I, I mean, you you take a guy like Ron Howard, who's a pro at making film, and obviously he's going to come into this project and he's going to he's going to look at what 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 is already there. And this is this is very much a a situation that we have with Justice League. Justice League did not necessarily. I mean, to me necessarily always feel like a Snyder film. It, it felt like this weird amalgamation. Some Absolutely. some some stuff definitely felt Snyder and some stuff definitely felt Whedon. Uh, whether or not that was originally done by design or if that was Whedon's just, just bleeding into this film. You know, with Ron shooting even reshooting even more, you know, it is he just going to take what's already there and add to it? How much did he actually do? Because, you know, they were 80% done with principal photography. Shit. Uh, that's not good. So, it it's a bit troublesome for the film. But it really sounds like everybody was comfortable with him in this transition. And he came into this not looking to take this thing over, but to, make, to finish the movie and make it a good movie. And... Obviously, he—I mean—he's Ron Howard. His his like his resume speaks for itself. Uh, yes, it does. A one movie, one movie, just one movie. Apollo thirteen. Absolutely. Like I'm sorry, it's one of the greatest to this day, greatest movies you'll ever see. Fantastic. I want to say, you know, Ron Howard too. You got to think. I wonder how many years he sat back going, "What if I directed a Star Wars movie?" He got offered Phantom Menace, I, I, I read. Wow. Oh, my God. That would have been a whole different world directed by Ron Howard. Um, the fuck were they thinking? He turned it Why down. Why didn't he take that? He turned it down saying <sighs> he said it would have been uh, a too daunting of a task. And here he is piecing together and reshooting a movie that's probably even more of a task than what, like, like there's the irony in that. So when you look at Ron Howard's directing... Um, we're we're gonna look at his first biggest his first big movie and that was Splash, uh, with Tom Hanks and I believe that was Tom Hanks and what's her name, Daryl Hannah. Yeah. And then Cocoon, he directed Gung Ho. If you've never seen Gung Ho, I uh, I work at a car factory and this has Michael Keaton in it. It's really cool. Smaller. Ron Howard does this really cool thing where he does like these. These smaller time, less big hit movies with awesome actors. So, give give you know, please go give that a shot uh, if you ever get a chance. Willow, Parenthood, Far and Away, Apollo Thirteen, Ransom. 
Ed TV, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the live action. A Beautiful Mind. There you go. Sweet. Uh, Cinderella Man, Da Vinci Code, Frost awesome. Nixon, Angels and Demons. Awesome. Uh, Dilemma, Rush, Made in America, Heart in the Heart of the Sea, and then you're going into like uh, some TV series that he's been on. Of course, Inferno. So, wait, his name is attached to a Zelda project? What? Oh, this is the, the, no. This can't be Legend of Zelda. This is something different. <laughs> it has to be because it the the cast is Zelda Fitzgerald, and she's being played <laughs> by Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> it's the same it's like the Zelda I know. Oh, plot summary: it, the life of an of novelist and jazz age socialite Zelda Fitzgerald. Ah, uh, okay. During her marriage to author F. Scott Fitzgerald. Okay, wrong Zelda. My bad. <laughs> Whoops. Got all excited for no reason. I, dude, I got super excited for a minute. Uh, but there you go, guys. Uh, uh, totally was not on the docket for us to just dive into Solo. But when we started talking about it, I just remembered the whole Kazdan thing, and we just unpacked that. So Yeah. You know, I want to say Ron Howard would be great at directing another movie, Black Widow. Just saying. Hey, man. Uh, give him the range to that. I am super excited that that finally got announced. Maybe it's almost like, you know, eight years later than what it really should have been at this point. But it makes you wonder if this is going to be sort of a prequel or if it's going to be set after uh, the whole the whole Infinity War in like the next chapter of what's going on with Black Widow. It's funny that you bring up the possibility of this being a prequel, because the first thing in my thought in my thought process was, yeah, what if they do kill off some Avengers, but they don't want to be done with having these people make good money for them how would you do that and uh, you know not saying she's super expendable but that would be an interesting thing to kill off you know uh black widow in infinity war part one or part two make it stick and then bring her back in for a prequel story that would be super cool and different and then you could use obviously hawkeye in some form or fashion and uh utilize that of course the question that that would be asked would be what would you do about a post credit scene to something that's a prequel to something that already exists? Unless maybe that's them meeting for the first time, her meeting Barton for the first time as the post credit. Her meeting uh, Nick Fury. Ooh, that's a good one. There's a lot of possibilities with this Brando. Uh, thinking about Black Widow as a whole and this finally kind of coming to light. I just read that Scarlett Johansson's going to be meeting with a possible movie writer in the next couple days to talk about script ideas. So they'll know what they can and can't do. That's awesome because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this character deepened. Um, out of the characters that they've done that are not going to get their own movie uh, or haven't yet, this is the one that I've wanted to see. So... Yeah, I think she can do a fantastic... Did you ever see Lucy? Uh, that was... Um, who? Was Scarlett Johansson? Yeah. D she had black hair, didn't she? I think so. But she like took some pill or something that and made she, her like... She could use more part of her brain, and that was Morgan Freeman. And she made her like crazy, like had, gave her like superpowers. Yes. Okay. I know I didn't see it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. It was really great, and I was as soon as I saw that movie, the first thing in my head was, "Holy shit, this would make for an amazing Black Widow story." Like, <laughs> not necessarily that the, the the pill or whatever unlocks her brain, but like after training and stuff, have her do all this crazy. It was just a very well done action movie. Scarlett Johansson did a great job uh, in that movie, so I, I I'm I'm fairly confident in this. One thing that I'll tell you, another a lot of people are really, really confident in is Black Panther. Have you heard about this? That it's pre-selling very well. Well, the first twenty-four hours out pre-sold Captain America: Civil War. That's good. In the first forty-eight hours, it's the uh, largest pre-sale Marvel movie in history. And now they're looking at it being a hundred and twenty million dollar opening weekend. That's awesome. So I mean, 
I'm excited as fuck for this. So I want to I want to add a little bit to this Black Panther conversation because there's not a lot, whole lot to say other than like, ooh, look, they might make a whole bunch of money. Uh, the story's got to be good. But one thing I want to say, Brando, I went to Second and Charles today. That's a place up here that's like a disc replay meets Barnes and Nobles on crack. If that makes sense. Uh, so you're so you're telling me that we need to let Mike and Joanna know about this place. Yeah, it's literally, it has everything. Books, games, comics, movies, records, guitars, toys. We're, dude, we're all screwed. Yeah, it's bad. It's totally, it's 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 a trap. <laughs> yeah. Akbar would tell us it's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, I went in there today because I'm trying to just buy the last two Marvel Cinematic Universe movies I need to complete my collection, which is Captain America Winter Soldier and then Thor The Dark World. Uh, I want to get the original copies of those, not the – they just did a re-release of the Marvel movies with new slip covers and stuff. And I'm not really down with that. I want to have the original shit. So I go into Disc Replay. They don't have them. I go to Second Charles. They don't have them. Uh, but they had Black Panther pops from the movie Oh, neat. already. And I was like, well, shit, I got to look at the back of the fucking box and see what they spoil for me, you know? And – um Interestingly enough here, Brando, Killmonger, he's the main villain for this movie. There's a variant of him with his Killmonger, like, Black Panther-looking suit on, but it's the glow variant, and it's glowing orange. Why would that ruminate with me? Do, do you know what this kind of seems to almost tip to me that might be happening in Black Panther? What's that? I think Killmonger's suit is powered by the Soul Stone. As much as I want to believe that the Soul Stone is going to be in the heart of Wakanda and it's what's keeping everything in Wakanda as is, uh, the glowing, bright orange, ass-looking Killmonger makes me think, well, what if he steals the heart of Wakanda to make his super suit so he can have powers? That makes sense. And then, you know, the suit and the stone itself is kind of poisoning him and turning him a little bit more crazy. That's why he rebels against his king. That's just my conjecture and thought. I'm not sure if that'll actually happen, but just looking at all the different pieces in the puzzle, I saw that as a very, very plausible possibility for uh, where they could take the story, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm super I'm super excited for... Um... For the film, dude. Um, I'm wondering what the final runtime is going to be. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that the first cut of this movie was four hours? Yeah. I'll sit through a four-hour Black Panther movie. I fucking did it for Titanic. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I Second... did it for Gods and Generals. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, dude. I'm. Oh, did you go with me, and Nate, or Jason, to see Gods and Generals? I think so. Yeah, I think did we went to the Lorraine to see that? Yeah, and, and like we that there was going to be an intermission but then like the film kind of break or something and we had an earlier intermission than we normally would have. I don't recall. It's I've I know that's the only, the only intermission I've ever had for a movie and it was different. A movie intermission, yeah. I you know I think so. I don't remember Brando. I digress. Uh let's look at the list here of things we still have to talk about. We you know we talked about how Deadpool moved up. How about something that Mike will be happy about? He's worried about superhero fatigue. We talked about that back on the Road to Infinity Minutia on uh, Nerds of the Round Table 3 here. New Mutants is out of 2018. A movie that was almost ready to release has now been pushed back a whole year. That's crazy. Wasn't that coming out in April? April 13th. It was the first Friday the 13th of this year. That... The fact that it's being pushed out of the year is worrisome. Is it worrisome, Brandon? Or does do you think this has something to do with the Fox Disney deal? Mm. Uh, I, it's just it, I just it's it's hard to not look at this and see them go. Well, what if we put Deadpool first? Then Deadpool can perform really well right after we get the super serious movie that is. Infinity War, and then after that we can do the solo movie and kind of spread our money out through May. You know, oh, well, there's some shit going on with New Mutants. We're not quite ready for that to release yet. Let's hold that off for a year. 
you know, there's rumors that the X Force movie is still going to happen, and in my head, I'm just going, look, if it's a project that Fox had created, this deal is done. So aside from the legality of it and them getting through the antitrust laws and stuff, like they're not like Disney's not going to go, okay, let's make an X Force movie right out the gate that was being planned. They're not going to. They're going to look at the stuff they really want to do, the Fantastic Four and shit, and then go that route. So I don't I'm not really sure, Brandon. I'm not really sure what this all means. I know that the film's working title is Growing Pains after the 80s sitcom Growing Pains. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's uh, the uh how they do like the uh blue harvest, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um there's also a potential spoiler. Ooh, tell me. Magneto is rumored to be involved in the film. Say what? Say what? Magneto is rumored to be involved in the film. Magneto was a mentor to the New Mutants in the comics. And this mm. this will be the fourth appearance of James McAvoy as Charles Xavier. Really? They're going to try to really actually tie this? See, I don't, I don't know, Brandon. The, I just, all signs point to danger. I don't see this movie coming out, or if it does, it'll be the end of the Fox X-Men franchise as a whole. Sans Deadpool, who doesn't count because he created his own rules and said, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I just, I don't know, man, because isn't uh, Dark Phoenix supposed to be coming around in, like, like in the fall? November 2nd. So, uh, so then we that... get, so then hold on, hold on, hold on. We get Dark Phoenix in November. What else is in November? Is that Aquaman? Yeah, uh, no, Aquaman's December. Aquaman is December, but in October we get Venom. Yep, October 5th. Ooh, nice segue, Brando. Holy crap, I mean, you want to talk about superhero movies and, and there being possible fatigue, you know, so we get Black Panther in February. And New Mutants is out, so it, that was going to be in April, so... Let's pretend it didn't go out. So that was going to be in April. And then we get Avengers and Deadpool in May, in the same month, mind you. Yep. And and just a few weeks apart. Like, basically, when Deadpool's going to be launching is when Avengers is, like, would would be sort of, like, kind of dying down if nothing else was coming out, you know, or if, like, maybe another big movie had come out. Um, So then, are we getting anything in the summer? Uh yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp comes out this summer. Does so okay, so Ant Man and the Wasp, and then we it's get the final movie for the MCU this year. And then we get Venom, Dark X Men, Dark Phoenix, uh, and then Aquaman. Man, it's a lot. It really is still kind of a lot. I mean. Even though less is, I mean, there's like some of this stuff has been thinned down. Obviously, New Mutants is off the board. Uh, Marvel sticking to their three a year, you know, uh, formula. They're not that far off of the board. I mean, we had three this year, and mm -hmm. it seemed to work really well. They had three of their arguably best movies ever came out in 2017. So as long as they can repeat that for 2018 and really hit three home runs. The question I'm having is, what is how is Ant-Man and the Wasp going to exist in the MCU between such a serious and heavy movie as Infinity War that is not going to wrap up, that's going to, you know, you're going to have both Ant-Man and the Wasp in Infinity War. Where does this story take place? Will this be a flashback story? Is this going to be an alternate timeline story? I mean, there's the, those are the questions I'm starting to ask now that we're, you know, really looking at the 2018 comic book movie year as it were um you know you said something about uh venom what did you think about did you see the first picture of tom hardy as eddie brock yeah what do you think yeah i'm um i am more excited for this than i was in the beginning same. I, it seems like they might be doing this some justice. Maybe Marvel has their hands a little deeper in this than we're led to believe. 
you know, it um, it's going to be, you know, in- interesting to see how the, all this plays out because, of course, we're we're you know we're saying that Venom cannot exist without Spider Man. And yet, maybe we're too married to that idea. You know, like, like you know, like you know what I mean. It's like, you know, who says that this necessarily needs to be the origin stories of origin stories? Maybe you just mention it, passingly. You know, you make this movie not the focus that Venom is after Peter Parker, but mm-hmm. maybe make the focus that Venom is after Cletus Cassidy and Carnage. Well. It, you you focus it more on the character of of Tom Hardy and 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 Venom. You know you, you focus it more on Eddie Brock. You focus it on 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 his duality, and on his being his being an antihero, just like you know he's had a comic book series by himself doing stuff by himself. You can you can't have the movie, and uh. I am way more excited for this now than what I normally was. I was very skeptical even here on the, even here on this show. But uh, you know, Nate, one of our old pals is following this movie very closely. Who? Uh, a good friend, Seek Donnelly. Oh yeah, he's doing vlogs, the Venom vlog, right? He is doing the Venom vlog. You can find it on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, he is doing a couple videos a week detailing. In the making of this, he's a very big Venom fan, and uh, uh, I, I just want to give him a, a quick shout out. He returned to the world of Facebook, and uh, so it, it's really glad to hear him doing well. Um, and I, and you know, I can't wait to have him back on the show. Maybe we can talk some Venom. Oh, that would be fantastic. Maybe we should. Uh... Oh, maybe we should do that. When the movie comes out, we can have him on with the review or maybe yeah. do like a special review with him. That'd yeah. be interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm down. Hmm. Okay. I like that idea. We'll reach out. We'll talk to him. We'll ask him about it. We'll say, hey, man, what are you thinking? Brando, before we go further, before we go further, I want to mention something that's happening on our Patreon right now that's very important. I want to talk to you about it now. Folks, for 3 bucks a month, you can get exclusive content on the Journey Into Comics Patreon. That's the network Patreon at patreon.com backslash Journey Into Comics. Here's the best part. Uh, for 18 straight weeks, and this started the first week of January, we are now in the third week of January, about to get the Iron Man 2 review. We are doing the Road to Infinity War series where everyone across the network will be doing reviews across the different MCU movies 18 weeks 18 MCU movies nine network shows all covering that all doing specials we're talking where stan in the movies we're talking about what the after credits are and what the special meanings behind that are rating the movies on a 10 and of course just talking about the things we loved and or hated about these movies they're not infallible some of these movies are kind of uh, subpar, as it were. So we're going to definitely get some honest reviews from everybody and have a uh, awesome, what do you call it, like a uh, chart that will let everyone know what we think the best movies in the MCU are. And I cannot wait to hear more of these reviews come out as we roll down the road to Infinity War. As I said, join us on Patreon today, 3 bucks Get you also early access to all the shows on the network. That's all 10 shows. Uh, did I miss anything on that, Brando? I don't think so, man, but I definitely want to say that we got some really, really cool ideas brewing for the Patreon and for the exclusive content. Stuff that, oh. we're, stuff that we're not ready to announce yet, but stuff that I am super excited about and I cannot wait to announce. You just said butt stuff. <laughs> not the podcast, folks. Uh, no, we do have some cool ideas uh, in development. We can finally say that again here. We're we're doing some new in development stuff. Yeah. It's been a minute. We finally got our bearings with the network, and now we're starting to develop new ideas. So we can't wait to bring those to you, make official announcements and whatnot, and you'll be hearing from us on those down the road. Brandon, we do have some serious stuff to talk about before we get out of here today, I feel. And, uh, you know, I don't know what your opinion is going to be on this, so I'm going to just open the floor right now. It has been recently revealed that some of the nurses that work for Stan Lee are accusing him of sexual misconduct. Yeah. This sort of thing, you know, it 
it's been happening since well i mean the the whole coming out with a lot of these accusations have been coming out for the past few months and uh and now stan lee finds himself in the crossfire you know i'm not going to say what stan lee is doing is not wrong if he's doing it cuz again this is all accused there's nothing's been nothing is formal yet uh but one thing I want to kind of say, and maybe this is wrong of me, and you know, you can definitely weigh in here. Uh, he's fucking ninety-five, folks. It's not like he can have his way with any person he'd like and push women around and and take advantages of situations. He's barely alive. He might not know he accidentally touched your butt. He might know he accidentally touched your butt, but he's on his way out. It's not like, I mean, okay, granted, I will say on the flip, there have been some accusations within this that he has been saying some pretty lewd stuff and suggesting some pretty lewd things happen. I just, I don't know, Brando. This is so weird. It's foreign because most of the other guys that got accused of shit, you look at the guy, you go, oh, he's fucking a scumbag. You can clearly tell they probably did it. Or there's been a couple instances where it's like, hey, he's really not a scumbag looking at you, Al Franken. And some situations got twisted, and that's very unfortunate. It is what it is. This situation, I just don't know how to look at it, man. I really don't. I don't know what to even, how do you even feel about this? So what do you think? I'm trying not to, kid. Um... Uh, I I hope you enjoyed that line, and I hope you understood where it came from. Um, oh, I totally got you. And um, I, I I don't know because the it when you're looking at a lot of guys who are powerful and have money, it seems like they're more inclined to act out and do things and like and with with the mindset of well what are you going to do about it and you look at some of these guys that have been accused lately of coming out and doing this stuff and he portrays himself as such a nice guy A tenderly guy, you know? Absolutely. So, I don't know. Because Another it's... Another thing to think of... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Brando. It's not right to, to discount these accusations as, like, false. But be, be, because there are people out there who do try to take advantage of people in these situations of people who have money. Absolutely. They're definitely out there. And... and I, I I feel like a, a bit of deja vu because I feel like we're having this that we're having the same conversation that we had just a few episodes ago about this sort of thing. Yes, we pretty much are. So uh, I I think that the sheer difference here, though, and one thing I want to mention is Stan was happily married for a really long time, and his wife just died, and it's just just not long after we're less than a year removed now. Now these accusations are coming up, now that he's a 95-year-old dude. It's not that these accusations are coming up from 1970 or 1960 in the Marvel bullpen, and Stan was trying to, you know, bang some chick that cleaned the office or some weird shit, you know. Like, those accusations aren't happening, and maybe if some shit like that comes to light, it'll it'll alter the opinion. But this is all really recent stuff, and you look at this guy, and it's like, how much of Stan Lee has really left? He doesn't do public appearances anymore, hardly. If he does, he sure as hell barely talks. They had him do something for Marvel like three months ago where he announced some shit in a video. or Actually, it was him talking about diversity and stuff because there was some th something that happened, and he was trying to, I think it might have been an immigration situation or something that happened, and he was speaking out on it. And he could barely speak. You could tell he's like... I'm sorry, but the Stan Lee that has been around in the past and has really been in the forefront of everybody's minds is not who's here now. And again, I'm not defending him. I'm just looking at this as objectively as I can and saying that like, while what he's doing is not right, how much of it is really him? 
I don't know. Um, you know. That is, uh, you know, if you listen to the Incredible Hulk review over on the Patreon, it, it got brought up that it was time to kill Stan Lee in the MCU. And with the kind of things that have been happening with people who have been getting a- these accusations, I mean, they they took Kevin Spacey completely out of a movie two weeks before it came out, for Christ's sake. Um, maybe this is the death of Stan Lee, is Stan Lee in the Marvel MCU, depending on how mm. they handle it. Man, I don't know. That's That's a crazy thing to think about, too, though. Hmm. I don't know, Brandon. This is a really bizarre time we live in, you know? It's a slippery slope. Ice, man. That uh, It's like a theme of the show. It's icy outside. We're going to an iced concert. It's this a slippery slope that humanity is slipping down here with. Okay, now I'm going to send you an ice uh, gif because I sent this to the band the other day because it was funny. It just made me giggle. One of those things that you see at 2 o'clock in the morning and you just start laughing because it's one of the, I don't know, it's just simple, but it's really funny and it'll get you. <laughs> it'll get you going. I, I, know, I think I know the cut of your jib well enough to know that you'll think this is oh, quite funny. Yeah, I've seen that. Dude, uh, That uh, we, we actually had something like that happen to us um, over at, our, uh, over at uh, Silent Rob's. Uh, yeah, Brando, you guys have a crazy steep, uh, like, w- way up to your house, too, also. Yes. So, um, I do not envy y'all in winter. It is very, very crazy when it's like, when the gravel is pure ice. That is really weird and scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Uh, I can recall back to uh, when I worked at Carter's, which was a, a couple years before Journey into Comics started. And uh, we delivered to sh- to a place in Sheldon, Illinois, I think. And this this gravel roadway up to these people's house was 100% a sheet of ice. Mm. The whole thing. We tried to drive the truck up it and slide back down into the road. So we just parked at the road and walked the shit up in the grass. That's the best we could do. And I'll never, ever, ever forget that. That was the iciest moment of my life. So. Well, you know. Man. I- I really hope that all of our uh, all of our listeners uh, definitely do their best to stay warm during these times of being cool, and I hope you guys have a really really awesome week uh, from all of us at the Journey to Comics Network. Thank you guys for checking out this episode of Journey to Comics, and uh, of course you can find us all over the web. You can find us. You can find the podcast. We're on so many different podcast services. Nate, we're on iTunes. We're on our great host of Podbean. Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, and of course, we are finally on Spotify. Yes, the one and only Spotify. We are we are there. If that's where you digest your music, we can also digest your podcast there as well. And of course, we're on social media. We're on the Instagrams, on Facebooks, at Journey to Comics. We're on the GIC Network over there on the Twitters, and uh, I, I think we have, I think we have a YouTube channel uh, that yeah. that that we you know try to stay out of trouble with. Over there, we're uh, basically we, we we don't do a lot of video content there because I mean because I mean we're podcasts, you know we're we're doing audio stuff, but it does go over there. So if you put on your you, you know YouTube on your TV or on your computer while you're doing background stuff, subscribe to us over there. You know, give us a good old follow though over there and uh, make sure you hit that little bell button. That way you never miss an episode. And of course, as we've said, head over to Patreon, help out the show, help out the network, and uh, you get early access for a buck and for three bucks, guys. You get exclusive content every single week right here on the Journey into Comics Network Patreon. And we got some great new stuff that will be exclusive to the Patreon as well in development. Hell yeah, and I can't wait to be announcing that eventually. Mm. Uh, also, folks, hey, Brando, twenty six. we are 26 weeks away from episode 200. Oh, man. It's half the year. We're only, th- we're only six months away, as it were. Holy crap, Ola. I know we maybe probably should start getting on the planning. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be here before we know it. Because the next thing we know, we're going to be like, oh, shit, we better have already. We should have planned this a long time ago. Damn. Oops. I forgot. I feel asleep. 
I feel asleep. <sighs> but uh, I think that's going to do it this week for JIC Brando. I think so as well, Nate. All right, folks. Well, catch us next week. It's Journey into Comics 175. This has been Journey into Comics 174. I'm Nate. I am Brando. And uh, remember, fill your brains with shit. Don't flush. <laughs>